Snell, a byword for professional-grade protection. On racetracks, on the heads of motorcyclists, Snell means the utmost safety. Nope. Not anymore. You want to know why Snell means dick all? Well, why was it ever meaningful? 1956. Race car ace William Snell dies from a tip over, hence the establishment of the Snell Memorial Foundation, a nonprofit whose only prerogative is to certify safer helmets to prevent tragedies. See, without Snell, we're stuck with the Department of Transportation. DOT allows a 6 meter per second anvil to bash 400 G's into your skull. The only word for a standard like that is deadly. 400 G's can kill you. So Snell says, golly, how about a 7.75 meter per second drop? And what if we don't hit it once, but twice? But no more than 275 G's on either impact? Yep. Not saying I just saved your life, kid, but I did. And Snell's hard-boiled helmets do save lives in cars. If I got a four-point harness holding me here, a headrest here, a roll bar here, it's damn likely my head will go crack, 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 crack on the same spots over and over. Eh. Snell's multiple impact tests make sense here. The downside of such a standard is that your helmet needs to be that hard to pass it. A peach in a cocktail shaker, it's only wise for massive impacts. Because in a tumble, the hard shell sends all those little knocks straight to your brain. Of course, if you're suspended in a steel bubble, well, who gives a shit about little knocks? Motorcyclists, we care because in a bike crash, you're less likely to see huge identical impacts and more likely to see various little hits. We have ex-Snell director James Newman on record. If you want to create a realistic helmet standard, you don't go bashing helmets onto hemispherical steel balls, and you certainly don't do it twice. People falling off motorcycles hardly ever, ever hit their head in the same place twice, so we have helmets that are designed to withstand two hits at the same site, but in doing so, we have severely, severely compromised their ability to absorb energy properly. You imagine your motorcycle crash as a fast, violent trauma. But statistically, that never happens, and when it does, Mr. Armstrong has three other fatal injuries, so his helmet is hardly relevant. Most survivable accidents involve some braking, an ejection, then a slow tumble, exactly where Snell's hard fortresses do more harm. Take it from expert witness Dr. Hurt. Helmet designs should be softer, 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 because people are wearing these so-called high-performance helmets and are getting diffuse brain injuries. Oof, quite the black eye for Snell. Of course, it turned out worse for the journalist who published this expose. Dexter Ford was fired for his trouble. Conspiracy? Nah, that's just the preamble. Snell softens up a bit in 2010, but stays mostly bullheaded, to this day thinking in one dimension, banging their helmets straight against the wall. Twice. Meanwhile, in Europe, ECE and FIM value six-dimensional freefall tests. Let the helmets be vraiment softer, laissez-faire to tumble how they will. It's a foundational difference. Snell evolves by saying, here's a survivable G number, let's push helmets to be hit harder and harder while maintaining this. Whereas FIM is dragging ECE down another path, saying, here's a realistic crash, let's push helmets to handle it with lower and lower transmission numbers. One asks manufacturers to manufacture harder, and the other wants them building softer. See the problem? Last year, we hit the inevitable threshold of incompatibility. As Snell's president says, the industry can reasonably meet either standard, but not both. This is the first in a pissy exchange of letters which went something like this. Hey, Kami, your softy standard is freaking impossible for our helmets. Blamange. They are hard helmets are so 1972. 
Hey, we'll come back here or I'll tell everyone your lids are dangerous. D'accord. Now, Snell is trapped, like a fish in a shot glass. And they've publicly stated their opinion that overseas helmets are unsafe and incompatible with Snell, but Europe is the biggest market. Most helmets will be made for ECE. Snell's shelf presence risks going from this to this. So what does Snell do? They slice their soul in half. That's right. There are two ways to get a Snell sticker. M2020D is the hard old double drop. I think it's wrong, but at least Snell thinks it's right because M2020R is a half height hurdle that no one has faith in. Well, for Europe, it lacks all the rotational criteria that their idea of tumbling safety is built on. And for Snell, it's obviously too soft. And what the hell is the point of a double standard? Snell's executive director admits that M2020R is based on a brutal arithmetic that allows an increase in risk in order to gain access to regions where ECE headgear are required. Of course, Snell maintains it's still an improvement, but their president put the main point bluntly. M2020R has been formulated to assure compliance with FIM and ECE. Does a standard whose function is to pass another standard serve any function at all? It's less about my safety and more about getting Snell's sticker into Europe. Their own directors admit that certain provisions of M2020R are of little use in evaluating helmet protective capability, but serve to assure compliance with ECE and FIM. What? Whether you think Europe or America has it right, we can all agree that's messed up. In a game of trusting names, I need to see this and know that Snell fully believes in it. But instead, they hid duplicitous shit in the fine print. Maybe my Snell lid is the kind they designed to keep my brain safest, or maybe it's the kind they designed to keep their names safely on the shelves. And now the real killer is that Snell allowed either standard to ship with the same label something they justified in the interests of fairness. Fair to who? Not you, not me, not any memorial nonprofit prerogative. Snell. Well, if the name can mean two different things, does it mean anything? 